This video, it's not a review. This is your guide to find out what makes Celebrity Cruises different from other cruise lines so you can decide if it's a good choice for your next vacay. So let's get into it. Welcome to Celebrity. We're going to break the celebrity experience down into 10 manageable categories, from the cruise style to the staterooms, and of course, all the food. We're going to see all of it. By the way, if you're new here, welcome to the channel. My name is Kevin. I'm of the opinion that the world needs a bit more honest travel content these days. So I make airline trip reports, high-end hotel reviews, and cruise ship tours as well, all without invitation. I always film without the company's knowledge and self-fund my trips to be sure to get a true experience. Then I give you nothing more than my own personal, honest, unbiased opinion. The itineraries. This is one area where celebrity has always excelled a bit, and for as long as I can remember, has always seemed to be just a smidge ahead of the pack when it comes to visiting smaller or more out of the way cruise ports. When you search for your cruise, you'll find that celebrity really doesn't put out too many cruises that are less than six nights. In fact, they thrive in the 10 to 14 night category not just for the variety of ports that they have to choose from, but also for the creativity and consistency of their entertainment and food teams. Of course, you're going to see many of the cruise ports that you know and love on their itineraries, Barcelona, St. Thomas, Juno. I'd encourage you though to seek out itineraries that come with ports that you haven't heard that much about. The Curacao's, Kotor's, and Corfu's are where you'll enjoy celebrity the most, with in-depth, curated shore excursions and daily locally sourced food on offer. I'd say 70% of their ports on offer are common everyday ports, and 30% are much more unique. Modern, cosmopolitan, upscale, smart casual, refined but unpretentious. These are all ways that you can describe the experience on any celebrity cruise. Top end, mid range is what we're talking about here. Celebrity being more cutting edge, whereas the likes of Holland America are of course more traditional. Celebrity specifically seeks out repeat cruisers, and I think it's safe to say that they would have one of the lowest proportions of first-time cruisers in the industry. Celebrity guests tend to be well-traveled and well-cruised. The three most common categories of guests that you'll find on board are families with older kids, couples in their 20s to 40s, and of course, worldly retirees. Celebrity has also made a point of keeping their fleet of ships smaller than their peers not introducing mega ships and trying to offer a consistent product across ship generations, which will likely keep customers coming back for more. Celebrity excels when it comes to technology and information before your cruise and while on board. The systems just work well and they don't overload you with upsell options. First thing on board is getting your Wi-Fi package sorted. Basic Wi-Fi is included in their all included package and you can upgrade that to premium for $14 a day per person if you'd like to do some more streaming. When you're on the ship, the app will be your home base for everything that you need. You'll get easy access to your current bill and any activities on board that day. And whether you're looking for which restaurants are open at the moment or what the specific menus are for that night, the app is your one-stop shop. And of course, you can also make reservations on it for all of the restaurants, the spa, shore excursions, and more. The daily newsletters are also something that Celebrity does really, really well and I really appreciate. They are incredibly detailed and have a good mix of port info and onboard happenings. Celebrity makes no secret that they try to push the boundaries a little bit with each new class of ship that they debut. Then those changes will dribble down to the full fleet during each ship's routine refurbishment. Personally, I think Celebrity is a great mix of traditional venues that you'd find on just about any premium cruise but with a decidedly modern touch. The class of ship that you're seeing now, the Solstice class, is well known for introducing the Lawn Club. At the time, the largest outdoor living green space on any ship, which continues to be used and enjoyed a decade later. Then we have the Edge class of ships, which is of course known for its Infinity Edge balconies and the Magic Carpet venue, which cantilevers over the side of the ship and can move up and down vertically for multifunctionality throughout the day. With all of these innovations though, I honestly, I don't think that it's ever seemed garish or way out there. More so, they're always just thinking one step ahead. The cabins in the newer Edge class series are in fact an improvement, but I do need to say that I have never been a fan of the staterooms on the Solstice and the Millennium class ships. 
Well, they're laid out well, as well as they can be, I guess, and they have plenty of storage. My forever pet peeve in here is that the bed has rounded edges. I'm six foot tall, and I can tell you for sure it is not comfortable for me. Celebrity's rooms are actually a bit narrower than some other cruise lines as well. Compared to the balcony stateroom that I recently had on Costa, my celebrity room was a full seven inches narrower. On a cruise ship, that's a lot. As for the bathrooms, there's nothing special and rarely would I expect more. I'm just glad that the shower is glass and not one of those shower curtains which will cling to you like saran wrap. The main dining room. Generally speaking, I have always said that the food on Celebrity is some of the best at sea, but the big exception to that is the main dining room experience. Whether for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, and especially at dinner with flexible dining timing, the service has a tendency to just feel very impersonal and rushed. Then of course there's the food. If Celebrity's buffets and specialty restaurants weren't so freaking good, perhaps I'd have a different opinion here but I think their main dining room food is just absolutely average at best. On any celebrity cruise I'm on, I'd likely only plan to dine here for a couple of nights. Which brings us to the polar opposite, the specialty venues on offer. Some of these restaurants are absolutely phenomenal, with the best in my opinion being the classic French Murano and my favorite, the Tuscan Grill. Service and food quality here is light years ahead of the main dining room offerings. If you're interested, I'd advise you to book before your cruise on the Celebrity website or app. You can link different rooms if you're traveling with a group, and you can have a discount per person by doing so, generally around $5. Also, keep in mind that the first night of all cruises is generally 30% off for all set menu specialty restaurants. My other two go-tos are Cafe Al Baccio, which serves up specialty coffees, teas, and pastries from 5 or 6 a.m., depending on the day's schedule, until late. Lastly, when looking for a departure from the normal cruise ship fare, Sushi on 5 always hits the spot. And now, the granddaddy of them all. The buffets for breakfast, lunch, afternoon tea, and dinner daily. The variety of food on offer here, especially for lunch and dinner, is truly mind-boggling. Each day's lunch buffets generally had a theme to match the port of call, and the food wasn't generic-inspired versions of the food, it was all, honestly, the real deal. Also, at every single buffet, there were stations for vegans, vegetarians, Jane vegetarians, and gluten-free passengers. For dessert, there was also always sugar-free and gluten-free options available. For a bit of perspective, on my recent Costa 7-night cruise, I had a total of 32 video clips from the buffet, some of them repetitive. On this 10-night celebrity cruise, I had 158, all unique. Let's keep in mind, Celebrity is a premium price cruise line. But when deciding whether or not that premium is worth it, surely these buffets deserve some consideration. I think Celebrity has a great variety of venues on board specifically to satisfy a range of demographics. From modern, sophisticated indoor lounges, martini bars, piano bars, outdoor pool bars, sunset bars, multiple live music venues, there truly is something for everyone on board. This is also one of the reasons why I think you see so many multi-generational families on celebrity cruises. On Holland America, for example, the 20 and 30 year olds might not have a place to call their own. On Virgin, it might seem the opposite. On Royal Caribbean, almost everything has an element of a family vibe to it. Celebrity is just a true mix. Each ship has a very large theater with big Broadway style shows, which I do think could be hit or miss though. Sometimes it just feels like they're trying to do too much and don't necessarily have the cast talent to match those ambitions. But where I do think they shine is their music on board. There's almost always a house band playing somewhere throughout the day and evening. You'll get one-off guitar sets at sunset bars. Nearly every sailing will have always at least a cover band or two or three. And all of their music is just honestly fantastic. I really hope that this video helped you decide if Celebrity Cruises is the correct cruise line for you. For my full tour and review of my 10-night Adriatic cruise on the Reflection, stay tuned. That'll be coming up in a couple of weeks. As for now, always remember that all of my content is unsponsored by the company that I'm reviewing. So your likes and subscriptions really do mean the world and help me continue to put out consistent content. I'll see you next time at the Jumeirah Resort in Bali. Oh, and thanks for watching to the end.